Hi, welcome to Fostering Resilience. I'm KJ Foster, and welcome to the sixth edition of Spiritual Sunday. And if you're brand new to my channel and wondering what the heck is Spiritual Sunday and who even is KJ Foster, my channel is dedicated to supporting the recovering community. So I aim to help individuals, family members, other loved ones, to support the recovery process, to help you to gain strength and resilience, to support successful long-term recovery from a substance use disorder. So this particular video, Spiritual Sunday, is where I make a book recommendation that you can utilize as a part of your toothbrush therapy practice. Toothbrush therapy being five sober disciplines that you do every single day to support successful recovery. And that applies to individuals and their family members as well because everyone is in recovery. That's my mantra. Everyone in the family is in recovery. Everyone needs to be taking action to gain strength and resilience. So today's book recommendation is, like I said, it's to help your, it's for you to potentially utilize as a part of your toothbrush therapy. One of those sober disciplines is reading four pages of spiritual literature every single day. And so this book that I'm recommending to you today is very specifically geared towards relapse prevention and helping people to successfully recover. And other books that I've recommended throughout this series, they really can be utilized by anyone and everyone. But this particular book, like I said, is definitely geared towards relapse prevention. And the book that I am sharing with you and recommending to you today is called Staying Sober. And it is a guide for relapse prevention. And this book was written by Terry Gorski and Merlene Miller. It's actually Terrence T. Gorski and Merlene Miller. And this book and Terry Gorski in particular hold a very special place near and dear to my heart. Um, unfortunately, Terry Gorski passed away last year in 2020, but he was a huge part of not only my recovery process, but my growth as a clinician. He is somebody that I met very early on when I was um, an intern many, many years ago, like 11 years ago, I believe. And I was blessed and fortunate enough to be able to work with Terry. I was trained in relapse prevention, advanced certified in relapse prevention by Terry Gorski. I got to co-facilitate groups twice a week, relapse prevention groups with Terry for a period of about two years. And so I learned so much from him. He's really well known for his relapse prevention program. He wrote over 30 books, um, just a wealth of knowledge. So just in general, just knowing that name and being able to look up all of the different resources that Terry has created and the research that he's conducted will really help you in your on your journey uh, in your recovery process. But this particular book, I am going to read four pages out of this book. And first, you know, sometimes I read the back of the book. Sometimes I read like the introduction about the authors. And the back of the book um, is very much like the last book I presented where there's just a bunch of quotes by different individuals who are supporting and endorsing this book. And the book is all about, like I said, it's all about relapse prevention. So I'm just going to share with you uh, the different uh, topics that are in the content. So Terry shares information about relapse as um, an addictive disease, post-acute withdrawal, which is the chapter that I'm going to review with you today and read basically a total of about four pages out of that chapter because I think that chapter in and of itself is gold because there's so much knowledge about post-acute withdrawal that will help you if you are the individual who is recovering or if you're the family member. It's just a topic that a lot of people don't know much about. I've produced several videos on post-acute withdrawal about post-acute withdrawal on my channel. They're one of the most popular videos, um, those that I produced about post-acute withdrawal. So that's 
how, um, how much people are looking for information about post-acute withdrawal. So I thought that that would be really valuable to read out of that particular chapter. And then he talks about the different phases of recover, recovery and what like partial recovery is compared to what full recovery is, mistaken beliefs about recovery and relapse, how to understand the relapse process, something called the relapse syndrome, how to plan for relapse prevention, how to have a relapse prevention plan, and then family involvement in the relapse process. And so just a ton of information in this book. I highly recommend that you go and you get it and you read it. But for today, I am going to be reading to you out of the section on post-acute withdrawals. So let me just get there. And I'm going to be reviewing it and just reading sections that I think will be really valuable to you because it's it's um, a long chapter and it is about a total of 13 pages so let me go to section three so post-acute withdrawal so if you're not familiar with post-acute withdrawal let me just um, read the the first page here to share with you what it's all about. When most people think about alcoholism or drug addiction, they think only of the alcohol or other drug-based symptoms and they forget about the sobriety symptoms. So we're most familiar with the what's called the acute withdrawal phase, which happens when you first stop um, taking the substance into your body. So most people are familiar with those based symptoms and not the sobriety Based symptoms. Yet it is the sobriety-based symptoms, especially post-acute withdrawal, that make sobriety so difficult. The presence of brain dysfunction has been documented in 75 to 95% of people who are recovering from alcoholism. He just refers to um, right now alcoholism, but, but this applies to both alcoholism and other drug addictions. So recent research indicates that symptoms of long-term withdrawal associated with alcohol and other drug-related damage to the brain may contribute to many cases of relapse. Post-acute withdrawal means symptoms that occur after acute withdrawal. Post means after, and syndrome means a group of symptoms. Post-acute withdrawal is a group of symptoms of addictive disease that occurs as the result of abstinence from addictive chemicals. In the person with the substance use disorder, these symptoms appear, generally they start to appear seven to 14 days into abstinence after stabilization from acute withdrawal. Post-acute withdrawal is a biopsychosocial syndrome. It results from the combination of damage to the nervous system caused by the alcohol or other drugs and the psychosocial stress of coping with life after drugs or alcohol. Recovery causes a great deal of stress. Stress being, by the way, like the number one relapse trigger. So many chemically dependent people never learn to manage stress without alcohol or drug use. The stress aggravates the brain dysfunction and makes the symptoms worse. The severity of pause depends upon two things. The severity of the brain dysfunction caused by the addiction and the amount of psychosocial stress experienced in recovery. The symptoms of pause usually grow to a peak intensity over three to six months after abstinence begins. The damage is usually reversible. Good news, right? Reversible. Meaning the major symptoms go away in time if proper treatment is received. So there's no need to fear. With proper treatment and effective sober living, it's possible to learn to live normally despite the impairments. But the adjustment does not occur rapidly. Recovery from nervous system damage usually requires from six to 24 months with the assistance of a healthy recovery program. And that's important to note, with the assistance of a healthy recovery program. So if you're out there and you're not taking action and you're not doing anything for your recovery, it's going to take a lot longer for your brain to heal and for you, for you to really fully recover, if ever, without taking action. So symptoms of post-acute withdrawal. How do you know if you have pause? The most identifiable characteristic is the inability 
to solve usually simple problems. There are six major types of pause symptoms that contribute to this. They are the inability to think clearly, emotional overreactions, memory problems, sleep disturbance, physical coordination problems, and problems in managing stress. Any or all of these symptoms may lead to diminished self-esteem. A person feels incompetent, embarrassed, and not okay about self. Diminished self-esteem and fear of failure interfere with productive and challenging living. Let's take a look at some of the pause symptoms that contribute to the inability to solve usually simple problems. And so this is where the authors, he and Merlene Miller, go into talking about the symptoms in, in detail, each of the symptoms. But of course, I'm not going to read all of that to you. It's 13 pages, it'd be way too long. Um, but I am going to, now that I've read about two and a half pages, I'm gonna go through and just share little bits of information from the rest of this chapter. So this is where they go into talking specifically about what you can expect from those different symptoms. And then after that, they give a case study of a gentleman named Ray. And then they give a case study of a woman named Thelma. And then they talk about patterns of post-acute withdrawal. And I think this is important information as well because post-acute withdrawal symptoms are not the same in everyone. They vary in how severe they are, how often they occur, and how long they last. Some people experience particular symptoms. Some people have other symptoms. Some have none at all. Not many though. I just want to point that out. Over a period of time, pause may get better. It may get worse. It may stay the same or it may come and go. If it gets better with time, it's called regenerative. Okay, so these are, he has Terry lists four different types of post-acute withdrawal. So one is regenerative. Regenerative. That means that it gets better over time. It just continues to, as time passes, get better and better. If it gets worse, we call it degenerative. And that doesn't mean that it's never going to get better. It just means that it's common when you've taken uh, benzos, especially years, you know, you've been taking benzos for that to have more degenerative pause symptoms where they, they get increasingly worse over time until they start to get better. So that's called degenerative. If it stays the same, it's called stable. And if it comes and goes, it's called intermittent. So he goes into talking about what to expect from those different types of post-acute withdrawal. So um, again, remembering regenerative, uh, regenerative, it gets better. Degenerative, it gets worse. Stable, it stays the same. And intermittent means it comes and goes. And so then he goes into talking about different ways to manage pause symptoms, which of course is really valuable information. It talks about education and retraining the brain, self-protective factors, nutrition, uh, exercise, relaxation, things that I've talked about in my various videos about pause, which you can go and check out on my channel. I'll make sure I include a link to those, spirituality, balanced living. And that's about it for that chapter on pause. So as you can probably tell just from me reading that, that little bit of information from that one section, there's a lot of valuable information in this book. So again, I highly recommend that you go out and you get it and you read it and you include it as a part of your toothbrush therapy, which is reading at least, not limited to, at least four pages of positive spiritual literature. And toothbrush therapy is based originally in 12-step recovery, although you can take toothbrush therapy and you can apply it to any recovery program. But since it did start in 12-step recovery, it's recommended your four pages, your four pages of spiritual literature that you start with the big book and then the 12 and 12. And I definitely would recommend including this book as well, regardless of what recovery program you're working. I think you'll find it super helpful. And I hope that you have found this video helpful. And if you have, if you could definitely give me a thumbs up because that helps the metrics of my channel. And 
If you leave a comment, that really helps me as well too. So if you could leave a comment, let me know. Are you experiencing pause? Did you experience pause? Has this information been helpful for you? That would be awesome and it helps me to get to know you as well. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, definitely click that red subscribe button below so you'll be alerted every time I post a new video. I generally post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday, but there are many times where I'll just, just this past week, I threw a video out there on Friday. So every once in a while, I'll just throw out another video and you will be alerted when that happens. So thanks again for being here and I hope you'll join me again next time. In the meantime, have a very beautiful and a blessed day. Namaste.